So this evening, I'd like to speak about the role that she played in the early history of Islam, especially next to the Prophet of Allah. We have been over the last nine nights studying the Quran. And therefore tonight as well, I'd like to elaborate on her role in light of verses of the Quran that are related to her. The first thing we'd like to point out about her is that she was chosen for a very difficult task. She was given a very important responsibility and she was supported also in fulfilling this responsibility. Let's go to Surah Ali Imran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses another lady who was chosen for an important task and an important responsibility. And that is Lady Maryam alayhi salam. In Surah Ali Imran, verse number 42, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمْ And remember the time when the angels spoke to Lady Maryam and they said to her. So this particular verse shows us that Lady Maryam was muhaddatha, that the angels would speak to her. And as we will see, that other ladies as well in the lifetime of the Holy Prophet were also muhaddatha as well. Ya Maryam, inna Allah has Surely God has chosen you. Meaning God has chosen you for an important task. God has chosen you for an important responsibility that you have a special position out of all of the women in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَطَهَّرَكِ And he has purified you, meaning purified you from evil, purified you from indecency, purified you from all the values which are wrong values. وَطَهَّرَكِ وَاسْطَثَاكِ عَلَى نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ And he has chosen you over all of the women in the world. In the ahadith we are explained of all the women in the world at that time because we know that Lady Fatima alayhi salam is Sayyida to Nisa al Alameen min al awwalina wal akhirin. She is the leader of all of the women from the beginning and from, uh, until the end as well. But Allah is informing her that of all the people you have a certain merit in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question I want to pose over here is why was this message given to Lady Maryam? Was it just given to her as a gift? Was it given to her just to make her feel good about herself? The author of the tafsir um, fi wahi al-Qur'an or min wahi al-Qur'an, he makes a very interesting point over here. He says this message was given to her as a preparation. And this particular message appears even in Surah Ali Imran in advance of another important message. And that was the message that she is now going to be giving birth or she's going to be bearing Prophet Isa without a father. It was both a very difficult moment for her, but also a very difficult responsibility for her. And she had to be prepared for that responsibility. She had to have the confidence to be able to carry it out and to bring him back to the society and present him as a messenger of God and a miracle of the Almighty. This was going to be a difficult task. And perhaps when Allah says to her, God has chosen you, according to one of the Mufassireen, it means that God has chosen you to be the mother of Al-Masih. And this was a difficult task. So to prepare her for this difficult task, the Almighty sent an angel to give this message to her that no matter what hardships you go through and no matter what people say about you and no matter what they accuse you of, do know, in Allah has tafaki, God has chosen you, وطهركي, and he has purified you. You have done nothing wrong. وطهركي, we are told in the hadith that uh, in the 
uh, tafsir of this particular verse of the Quran. It has been narrated from the Holy Prophet. Fuddilat Khadija ala nisa'i ummati kama fuddilat Maryam ala nisa'il alameen. That Khadija has been given merit over the women in my ummah the way Lady Maryam was given merit and preference over the women of the world at that particular time. We see in the life of Lady Khadija that she was also destined for a very important and difficult task. And so in the same way that the angel came to Lady Maryam, the angel also brings a message for Lady Khadija. And uh, this message comes to the Prophet of Allah, uh, Hadrat Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Where we're told that the angel came to the Holy Prophet and he gave the Prophet of Allah glad tidings. And he said, give our salams to Khadija and tell Khadija that when she passes away, what is waiting for her is a house in Jannah min qasabin la sakhabin fihi wa la nasab. That there is no distress in it. There is no hardship in it. There is no difficulty in it. Sometimes you can understand the difficulties a person is experiencing from the du'as that they make. And there's no doubt that one of the du'as that Lady Khadija would have had was with respect to her own environment. When she was with the Prophet of Allah, it was a very difficult time for them. It was a very stressful time for them as well. It was the beginning of the mission of the Holy Prophet. And she faced a lot of hardships along that way. And therefore when Jibra'il or the angel comes to the Holy Prophet, he says, inform Lady Khadija that awaiting for her in Jannah. And the reason why he would have informed her is because she had to continue that mission. She had to continue that difficult task that she had been given. And it was very hard. And in the same way that the angel came to Lady Maryam to give her the inspiration and the courage and the strength to be able to continue with the mission that God had given her, in the same way the angel has come with a message for Lady Khadija to give her the strength, to give her the courage, to give her the inspiration to be able to continue supporting the Prophet of Allah in this difficult mission which they were propagating together. The second point we'd like to make about Lady Khadija is that her role was the role of consoling and supporting and giving strength in some ways to the Prophet of Allah. There is a verse in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا Describing the believers, it um, mentions one of the du'as that the believers make. It's a very good du'a for us to memorize and to recite in the qunut of our salat, for example. It says the believers are those who say, رَبَّنَا, our Lord, هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا Grant us from our spouses and from our children the coolness of our eyes. Now I'm going to be explaining this particular term. And make us an imam for the muttaqin. Meaning the Prophet of Allah wanted to be or the believers want to be leaders not on the basis of the dunya, but if they want to be leaders, they want to be moral leaders on the basis of taqwa. And let's come to furrata a'yun, the coolness of our eyes. The Mufassir of the Qur'an, Allama Tabarsi, in Majma' al-Bayan, when he explains this particular term, he says, بِأَنَّرَاهُمْ يُطِيعُونَ Allah." Right? When we pray that, O oh Allah, let us find in our spouses, in our children, the coolness of our eyes. 
it means that we should be able to see them obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or he says it is possible, what this term means is, اَيْ أَحْلُ طَاعَةً تُقَرِّبُهُمْ أَعْيُنَنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا بِالصَّلَاةِ وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ بِالْجَنَّةِ That we should see them that they are people of obedience, so that our eyes would become cool by seeing them to be righteous in this world and seeing them in paradise in the hereafter. Now I'd like to make a comment on the tafsir that he has made. That this tafsir is not in fact a tafsir of the Qur'an or a ta'arif of this verse. We need to make a distinction. And since you are, inshallah, students of the Qur'an, as you are reading tafsir, the point I'm about to make will be quite helpful in understanding how to read the tafsir. There is something called ta'arif and there is something called mistaq. Ta'arif means to give a definition of something. Or say tafsir means to give an interpretation of something. When a word is not clear for us, when the meaning of the word is not clear for us, we explain it in a manner that is easier for us to understand, in a manner that removes any ambiguity about that particular term. Then there is something called mistaq. Mistaq does not mean to explain or to interpret. Mistaq means to provide an example, a mistaq, an instance of that particular verse. Sometimes the mufassireen, instead of providing an interpretation, they are in fact providing us with an example. What we have to appreciate is that the interpretation of that verse is not limited to the example. It is more vast, more comprehensive than the example. For example, in Surah Al-Fatiha, we say, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, guide us to the right path. Sirat Al-Ladina An'amta Alayhim, the path of those whom you have had your blessings upon. Some of the Mufassireen and some of the speakers have said, this refers to the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. Yes, one of the most example, one of the most clear examples, the best examples are the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. There are no better examples of it, but the verse is not limited to them. There are others as well who have received the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this particular case, the Mufassir is giving us examples. The meaning of Qurra Ta'ayun is not limited to the example of seeing them obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here what we have to do is we have to go back to the actual meaning of Qurra Ta'ayun. Qurra comes from the Arabic word Qarra meaning to cool. Qurra Ta'ayun means coolness of the eye. When something brought joy, when something brought happiness, when something brought comfort, it was as if it cooled the eye. So the Arabs would call it qurrata a'yun, something that is bringing surur, happiness. It's bringing farah, joy. The dua is, Rabbana hablana, O oh Allah, grant us from our spouses and from our children qurrata a'yun, something that will bring joy to us that will bring happiness to us, that will bring comfort to us as well. That is the role that Lady Khadija السلام, played in the life of the Holy Prophet. The Prophet of Allah, we would have to ask when he made this dua, who was the azwaj of the Holy Prophet? Who are the dhurriya of the Holy Prophet? And there are beautiful ahadith that explain to us for example, in one hadith, the Prophet of Allah asks Jibra'il that, قُلْ تُ يَا جِبْرَائِيلِ مَنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا أَزْوَاجُنَا Who are our spouses over here? And Jibra'il answered, and limiting it to one answer, we've never seen this particular verse being interpreted in another way or with other examples. Just one example for the Holy Prophet, and that is, قَالَ Khadija. He said it refers to Lady Khadija. And the role that she played 
is to provide joy and happiness and comfort to the Prophet of Allah in the most difficult time. We have to appreciate this, brothers and sisters. The Prophet of Allah in the early history of Islam, when he first started his mission, it was very difficult for the Holy Prophet. It was very draining for the Holy Prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often in the Quran consoles the Prophet of Allah, supports the Prophet of Allah, uplifts the Prophet of Allah. Look at those verses. Alam yajid ka yatiman fa'awa alam nashrah laka sadrak ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala Your Lord has not forsaken you or forgotten about you, for example. Ta'aha ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an li tashqa there were times when the Prophet of Allah felt loneliness. There were people not willing to listen to him, people not willing to follow him. There are people giving him a very difficult time. In those moments, the Prophet of Allah found comfort, one, through the verses of the Qur'an. And you will find, subhanAllah, so many verses of the Qur'an, their role was to give comfort and ease and strength to the Holy Prophet during those difficult times. In the second place, the Prophet of Allah found comfort and support and strength was through Lady Khadija. Sometimes we limit the role of Lady Khadija to the role of being the financial supporter of the Holy Prophet. And there is no doubt that she was the financial supporter of the Holy Prophet. She gave everything that she had in order to support the mission of the Holy Prophet because in her belief and her action, she believed in the mission of the Holy Prophet. But the second role and the more important role that she played was to give comfort to the Prophet of Allah, to provide that support to the Prophet of Allah. As we say that Lady Zainab was Sharikatul Hussein in the mission of Imam al Hussein, in the movement of Imam al Hussein, then Lady Khadija was Sharikatul Rasulullah. She was the partner of the Holy Prophet in the movement of the Holy Prophet. And this is something that the Prophet of Allah would never forget until the end of his life. That one day one of his wives, he says, she says to him, How long are you going to remember Lady Khadija? And she was just an old lady, for example. She was an ajuza. The Prophet of Allah became so upset. And according to this hadith, he said that I got from her, She verified me, she accepted me, she said I spoke the truth when you belied me. And she believed in me when all of you were disbelieving in me. Um, and she gave me children when you were not able to, able to provide me with children and the Prophet of Allah continued to praise her and continued to remember her. This was the role that she played in the life of the Holy Prophet. The last role that I would like to speak about is that she played the role of moral leadership in the Muslim community. Let's come to Surah Al-Waqi'ah and very quickly at that, in Surah Al-Waqi'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala groups people into three groups. They are the first group, as sabiqoon as sabiqoon those who are at the forefront. The second group are Ashab al yameen uh, people of the right hand. And the third group are Ashab al-Shimal, people of the uh, 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 left hand, for example. Now, in these three groups of people, the Quran first starts to talk about as sabiqoon as sabiqoon those who are at the forefront, those who are at the forefront, they are the ones who have been brought near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. According to one of the uh, mufassireen of the Quran and one of the narrators of hadith, we have narrated one hadith from him already. It is Ali ibn Ibrahim ibn Hashim. If you're Al-Qummi, if you remember the hadith which stated that the Prophet of Allah received a ru'ya, a sadiqa, true visions from the age of 37. This was narrated by the same person. He says 
السابقون السابقون أولئك المقربون the السابقون السابقون those who are at the forefront meaning those for example who are at the forefront of accepting Islam they are Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa Khadija wa Ali ibn Abi Talib wa dhurriyatihim wa dhurriyatihim um, it was Khadija the Prophet of Allah and Imam Ali and therefore it has been narrated that in the early early days of prophethood it is narrated that near the Kaaba it was seen the Prophet of Allah was saying salat and Imam Ali was behind him and Lady Khadija was behind them and it was at a time when only three people were believers at that time two of them Imam Ali and Lady Khadija being those who believed in the message of the Holy Prophet and nobody else believed in that message that's the kind of leadership the Quran wants within a person now there are two ways to define leadership the first way to define leadership is to define leadership as a position a position where people follow a position for example where people look up to that person and there we see leadership as an achievement leadership as an accomplishment yet most of these leaders who think of it as an accomplishment that they got elected, they got selected, they forced themselves into the position. Most of them, when you look at them, they are not leaders. They are followers. They follow what the people want. They seek to please the people. They seek to hold on to power. Or they are followers of their own desires. But they are not leaders. A true leader is a person who shows leadership in goodness. And that's called moral leadership. It's regardless of whether people follow them or not, regardless of whether people support their position or don't support their position, regardless of whether what they choose to do is um, uh, you know, considered reputable in society or not considered reputable in society, whether it is the in thing or not the in thing, whether it is in vogue or not, they still do it. That's leadership. It's the ability to be able to do things that others don't have to, the ability to do. That's leadership. And I have no doubt it's that kind of leadership that inspired the early Muslims and inspired generations of Muslims. When we see that Imam al Hussein is able to stand up and do what others are not willing to do, that's leadership. I have no doubt that part of that inspiration came from his grandmother, Lady Khadija salam. And therefore we say in the ziyara, we say, Assalamu alayka, ya ibn Khadija al-Kubra. My salams be upon you, O son of, well, not just the biological son, but the ideological son of Lady Khadija alayhi salam as well. And that's the kind of leadership role, moral leadership that Lady Khadija played in the early history of Islam. We take our hearts to the city of Medina or the city of Mecca where this great lady has been buried. And tonight, this evening, we remember the hardships and the difficulties that she faced, especially towards the end of her life. We find that the Muslims were in hardship and difficulty and they were boycotted in the valley of Abi Talib for almost three years. During that period of time, it was the wealth of Lady Khadija. It was her sacrifice. She gave everything that she had. She didn't hold anything back in supporting the Prophet of Allah, in supporting the Muslims and being able to provide for them. It is through them, it is through her that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for the Holy Prophet. And you found, we found that you were in need, and so we provided you and we enriched you. And the Mufassireen in the Ahadith have told us this refers to the, 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 the contribution of Lady Khadija. They say that she contributed so much that towards the end of her life, she had nothing left for herself, that even for the kafan, she did not have enough wealth to buy the kafan. And therefore, there are two narrations, one saying the kafan came from heaven for her, 
and the second one saying that a cloth of the Holy Prophet was used to shroud Lady Khadija. So imagine the last night when Lady Khadija is sick and she is about to pass away. The Prophet of Allah must have spent that night with Lady Khadija, taking care of her, consoling her, comforting her, saying kind words to her the way she did to him for the last 13 years of his life from the time he started his mission and even before then. Imagine the state of the Holy Prophet when the morning came of the 10th of Ramadan and Lady Khadija breathed her last and she returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine the emptiness in the heart of the Holy Prophet. Imagine the sadness and the grief in the heart of Rasulullah. We don't know of what words he might have said at the time, but we know of the words that Imam Ali said when he had buried Lady Fatima. He said, Ya Rasulullah, the amana that you had given to me, I have returned that amana. But as for my days, they are going to be spent in grief. And as for my nights, they are going to be sleepless. And perhaps the Prophet of Allah felt the same way when Lady Khadija passed away. And that's why he could call it Amul Huzan, the year of grief. <laughs> أي منقلب ينقلبون إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون Oh Allah, we pray to you that you give us the tawfiq to follow in the footsteps of Lady Khadija Oh Allah, give us the tawfiq to be amongst the sabiqoon as-sabiqoon to be with the Ahlul Bayt in step with them Oh Allah, give us the tawfiq to provide comfort and care and kindness to members of our family and all those who are working for Islam and supporting the movement of Islam, you know, Allah, we pray to you to raise us in our darajat, to accept all of our good deeds and to forgive our sins for the sake of Lady Khadija alayhi salam. Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.